Okie doke. Simon from simonwoods.com here. Uh, we are on Discover the Origin Part 3, which means it's port time. And uh, you know what colour typical port is. It's this colour, isn't it? Uh, actually, it's not this colour. This is um, Croft's Pink Port. And Pink Port, I first became aware of its existence. 2008, something like that. I think Marks and Spencer's got some of uh, uh, some in for under their own label. Don't think it was made by Croft, or was it? It's probably, probably made by Croft under another label. Anyway, uh, what I don't know what you think of Pink Port. The idea is uh, it's port for people who don't like port, and it's um, uh, the rosé's been pretty popular over the last few years. So why not have Pink Port? The idea is you just leave the grape skins in contact for, with the uh, uh, juice for a very short time. It goes pink, then you fortify it, um, and the, you, the purists again will sort of go, "Oh, your port's supposed to be red. You're supposed to have it with your gout." Uh, well, let's give it a whirl. It's, it's not. It's not. It's not supposed to be a serious wine. It's supposed to be a tasty wine. And it's like, um, do you remember? If you're over a certain age, Cresta. It's frothy, man. It's got that character. It's got vanilla. It's got a bit of wood to it, and um, yeah, it's got a bit of juiciness and sprightliness, and uh, feels like it's going to be fun and tasty. Almost feels like I want to have it as a long drink with a bit of tonic and a, uh, some ice and a bit of lemon in there. Yeah, loads of red fruit, raspberries, strawberries, strawberry jam, and a bit of vanilla. Yeah, I want that. I want that really cold as a long drink with lots of ice. And um, Bob's your uncle. Let's try red ports now, which is, of course is where the action is at. Um, what are we starting with? I don't know. I don't know which order to do these in. I'll do these them this way around. Burmester's ten-year-old tawny. Um, and we're serving this tonight ever so slightly chilled because we've just gone into British summertime. So uh, it's summer and uh, we all take our clothes off and uh, get chill blends and all that. But um, yeah, I like tawny port straight out. Not Maybe not straight out of the fridge, but uh, with a bit of a chill to it. So you notice its freshness. But I also like it in the middle of winter when you've got Christmas cake. Very nice with that too. And oh, I love tawny port. I stick my nose in there and it's like... It smells like your, 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 it's your grandmother's chest full of Christmas cake. It's got walnuts, it's got this woody mahogany edge, um, and it's got this juicy plump. Uh, you know when you, do you remember those bits of, um, bits of cake you used to be able to buy on uh, British Rail, when it was British Rail, and they had one cherry in there. This is just smells like that, because it's got a bit of that vanilla and almond in there as well. And I do like it at that temperature. Uh, what it's, it's doing is um, because the when, when you put a uh, port in a barrel, uh, the, a lot of the uh, the harder edges they soften and they mellow out. So there's no real hard tannic edges. And um, if you chill something that's got hard tannic edges, and then you uh, then you drink it, then you notice those hard tannic edges. But because all those tannins and all the bits of colouring material and other things have uh, precipitated out in barrel. Um, you're just left with something that's juicy, rounded, and it really is like as if someone sort of like squeezed a Christmas cake through some muslin, and uh, it's pretty tasty, and I like it a lot. Speaking of Christmas cake, I would love it with Easter, with the, with the Christmas cake, but um, it's not Christmas. But we're coming up to Easter, and don't you have something similar to uh, uh, Christmas cake at Easter and call it an Easter cake, or is it just like a Christmas cake that someone found in a cupboard? But um, anyway, pretty nice with stuff like that. Uh, but also pretty nice as uh, um, when the sun goes down and you've got your um, I mean if you're if you're in Portuguese mode you've got your salted almonds and if you're in English mo mode you've got a big pack of Pringles, pretty good. Okay, uh, last two. First, well, uh, the, we, we're going in uh, from the uh, the tawny edge to the ruby edge. And what's the difference? Tawny does its aging in a barrel. Ruby does its aging in a bottle. And uh, tawny, as the name indicates, it's got that slightly browner edge. Ruby is de ruby in colour. So this is LBV. LBV, I think, has got a, a spent between four and six years in a barrel. And does it say on this one? No. Blah, 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 blah. Yes, it does, actually. 2005 vintage, bottled in 2009. So... Um, it's it had four years in barrel, and let's see what colour it comes out. It comes out in pretty ruddy, healthy colour. 
that was Ruddy the Colour rather than the uh, apprentice swear word. And um, so, and it, what it, the other thing it says on here is unfiltered. What sometimes happens with LBV is, uh, yes, you, you, uh, if, you, if you've got a wine in a barrel, some of the bits start to precipitate out, but there's still quite a lot of matter in the wine. If you then plonk it in a bottle, uh, then that matter will continue to precipitate out. But... Um, uh, if you've got a, a, something that says unfiltered, uh, it, it's a wine that will actually continue to develop in bottle. If it doesn't say unfiltered, uh, or sometimes they use the word traditional instead of unfiltered, uh, what it means is they've probably done a sterile filtration on it, and it's there and it's inert, and it's, it can be very nice, uh, but uh, it won't develop in the bottle in the way that this will. Let's see what it's like now. Cherries in liqueur. Um, and um, but it, yeah, it feels like one of those um, it's weird Alsace uh, fruit liqueur, fruit liqueurs that are, are completely clear. But you stick your nose in and you think, hang on, this smells of strawberries. This smells of plums. It's 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 got that mixture of plums, strawberries, cherries, raspberries, and that little kick of alcohol, um, which. If it, weren't, if it didn't have the kick of alcohol, it wouldn't be poured. Uh, it feels like it's going to be uh, rich, but uh, there's a freshness to it, which I quite like. And that's what LBV should do. LBV, the idea is vintage port without tears. It's ready when it's young, but ones like this have the potential to develop. What's lovely about this now, it's got this immediate juiciness. And uh, people think of port as being something that you just have at the end of a meal. Honestly, if you have... If you're not going anywhere for a few days afterwards, try it with some peppered steak. Honestly, it's really tasty. And especially if you plonk a little bit in the sauce. Pepsi up, Pepsi you up as well, and uh, providing you don't have too much of it. Maybe I'll uh, try to spit that out or swallow it. Let's see. I spat it out. Hey, I have work to do this evening. Um, final wine, and this is vintage port. And um, vintage port, uh, I, LBV has to be in barrel between four and six years. I think vintage port has to be in barrel between two and three years, something like that. Uh, and it's not, uh, this is from Taylor's, and it's not their great vintage port. Uh, they only make that about um, three years every decade. But uh, in the years in between, uh, they still, they've got this. Um, they've got a few farms where they get their, their, their grapes from, and uh, one of these is called Quinta de Vargelis. And in a less than stellar year, Quinta de Vargelis can still deliver something that's terrific. Uh, so they'll bottle it by itself. Hey, here it is, 2001 vintage. And the weird thing is, it's four years older than the, uh, uh, the, 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 the Quinta de Crasto, but it feels fresher and it feels firmer and it feels steelier and it feels livelier. It feels more manly. By manly, I don't mean erratic and self-seeking and uh, thinks more highly of itself than it should. What I mean is it's got more muscles and um, it's got more stamina and more grip and grunt. And, uh, yeah, it feels like a, a wine that you want to, uh, um, yeah, you want to uh, sort of, I don't know, attack pirate ships with. Let's try it. And what it has, it's got a wine with hairs on its chest. That. What it has that the um, Crasto doesn't is, yes, it's got this lovely, rich, um, proud fruit, dark fruit, berries, black currants, damsons, that type of character. But it's also got this fragrance, which I missed in the Crasto. Uh, the Crasto was maybe on that ever so slightly jammy side. This one's got warmth. Uh, but it's also got this um, ever so slight violet edge. Chocolate, cocoa, pretty terrific wine that. Um, and nice way to end. Quite a different from the uh, uh, quite different from the the Croft Pink that we started with. But um, nice way to finish. See you soon.